they both acknowledged that they had witnessed more death in one week than they did in their first 10 years of nursing and they discussed how terrified that they would contract the disease before they end the day. Cindy admitted that she sometimes thought of quitting to get away from all that fear and death, but she was too concerned for the deceased people, the sick people. Tom said each day he prayed more intensely than he did before and added, each morning I ask Jesus to come and spend the day with me. Cindy indeed decided that she too needed to invite Jesus to spend the day with her. The women said that angels appeared to them, informing them that Jesus was not in the tomb and that he was alive. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus were trying to understand the meaning of all that happened. Jesus called the two disciples for their lack of faith and explained how scripture from the time of Moses and the prophets revealed that Christ would suffer these things and enter into his glory. Since it was growing late and they had not yet reached Emmaus, the disciples said to Jesus, stay with us. While at table, Jesus took the bread and said the blessing, broke it and gave it, to his, gave it to them. When Jesus did this, the disciples recognized that the stranger was Jesus and immediately he vanished from their sight. And it was because of where you paused. So there's a pattern I see. You would say things like, love the victim, or invite him, or said the blessing. Protect one another. So you took a verb, okay. and you stopped after the verb, and you didn't complete it. So I saw that as a whole pattern. Okay. So if you said, protect one another, oh. is better than protect one another. Or if you said, Love the victim. Okay. So whenever you, when you go through your okay. text, when there's a verb, like an action, make sure it's completed. Okay. Don't break that up. Otherwise, okay. right. I hear the verb, and then I don't hear what it's going okay. with. Uh, but Because I started writing them down. Or since, it, this isn't really the same thing, but since it was growing late. Yeah. It should be since it was growing late. Okay. So that's what I was talking about this morning. So I'm glad you did this just so I can see how it, it, chop, it chops it up a little bit if I pause in the middle of a phrase. Okay. And your message will be better that way. Like again, Cindy indeed okay. decided. Okay. Informing them. Oh, okay. So there's, you just have that pattern. So when I would go through the script, I'd say, okay, if there's a verb, okay. you know, like the action, make mm -hmm. sure it goes with what it's okay. acting on okay. so it makes sense to me. Okay. Uh, did you say tomb at one point? T O M B G. Uh, two, no. It sounded like two. Okay. So make sure you complete your words too. But I mean, I think it was good, but that's what I think would be the best thing to work okay. on okay. that it would flow. And can you hear that? Did, did you hear the choppiness that I'm talking about? Were you able to hear that as I mention it now? That I, I, I heard just it didn't seem to be, to be flowing as much as okay. it could. Okay. Yet when you got very familiar with things okay. towards the end and you said things, and maybe you were rushing at the end because you knew yes. you were out of time. <laughs> All of a sudden, your words started flowing better. Okay. So watch that on the video and see how that changes. So again, I hope this is helpful oh, yeah, to you to see. Circle, yeah. But it just tells you that's why okay. setting those markings may help and say, oh, if I break it up here, does the message flow or did I chop up the message? Okay. And so that's where I see would probably be the best way you could work on it. Okay. Your information is good. For the most part, the clarity yeah. was good. But I was hearing the choppiness. Okay. Have you ever listened to a speech, presentation, or a sermon that was difficult to understand? 
Did you know that there must be a good message, but you're distracted by the rhythm or choppiness of the speech? I've been working with international professionals, including scientists, IT professionals, healthcare providers, and priests for over 15 years. I've coached them to deliver scientific presentations and sermons in a clear, concise, and engaging manner. However, some, in an attempt to speak clearly, focus so much on pronouncing every word, they become quite choppy, and it's more difficult to follow the message. Pausing is an effective strategy to gain the listener's attention and enhance the key points. It's also a gift to the listener. It helps them process the information. However, pausing must occur at the appropriate places to preserve the message and avoid the awkward breaks which disrupt the meaning. Pausing is also a gift to the speaker. It helps the speaker think clearly, and it also prevents the word fillers, such as, um, so, like, uh, you know. To maintain the meaning of our message, we need to keep words together in phrases. So you ask, where should you pause? I've developed some strategies to help you in this area. Number one, the most obvious, is observe punctuation. If you see a period or comma in a reading, pause there. Number two, keep the articles such as a, an, and the with the noun. For example, a study, an investigation, the results. Number three, keep prepositions with their phrases. And for example, you would say, in the room, of this world, at the conclusion. Number four, words that are connected with and and are pairs should remain together, such as brothers and sisters, family and friends, results and recommendations. And number five, which is an interesting rule, is keep the words together in a verb phrase. These are the words that are connected to the action. They can be one word or several, such as invite him, listening to others, giving the results. So you ask, how can you prepare for your speech using these strategies? First, write it out, and then you can decide where you can put these pauses. Mark them on your script so that you can practice it that way. Then record yourself and listen back. After you listen, make any adjustments so that you can relay your message in a coherent and engaging manner. And remember, just because you're writing out your script, you don't need to read it exactly or memorize it, but you're using this as a strategy. So take these suggestions, help yourself speak more fluently with appropriate pausing.